Hello everyone, how are you? My name is Jarrett Mackey and welcome back to the second episode of the USL Championship Explained. Today we'll be diving into the very new and very brief history of Monterey Bay FC. On February 1st, 2021, it was announced that the USL would be welcoming Monterey Bay FC into the USL Championship, with the idea being for them to begin play in 2022. They were supposed to be joined by fellow newcomers Queensboro FC, but Queensboro has since moved back their entry date to 2023. Who knows? Monterey Bay, California has a population of just over 415,000. If you round that up, we get to the funny number from the last episode of 420,000. So we're just going to do that. It looks like an absolutely gorgeous place and is not terribly far from both Los Angeles or San Francisco, as you can see from this handy graphic that I found online. The bay itself was named after Gaspar de Zaniga Acevedo y Fonseca, the fifth count of Monterey, which then the city and then the county, one of the original counties of California, I might add, was named after. Interestingly enough, the Monterey Bay region claims to have inspired both Treasure Island and the Grapes of Wrath. Monterey Bay has an interesting history of professional soccer clubs, going all the way back to 1993 when the Santa Cruz Surf joined the USISL. They would only last through the 1994 season. Taking the torch for the now-deceased Surf would be the Monterey Bay Jaguars, who would eventually change the location in their name to California, like, you know, the state. They found success and won the only ever USISL Select League Championship, defeating the Richmond Kickers. By the way, I love that I get to use this video again, I don't even know why. The Jaguars would continue to play in USL leagues until they folded after the 1999 USL D3 Pro League season ended. For the record, they finished the season in 4th place in the Western Division. Then, the national club soccer scene in Monterey Bay was silent for a few years. Too silent, even? This silence lasted until 2004, when BAM, the Salinas Valley Samba joined the Men's Premier League Soccer League for its second season. In 2007, the National Premier Soccer League would see two Monterey Bay teams competing in the same league, with the Santa Cruz County Breakers already established. This roaring age of national club soccer in Monterey Bay would not last long, as the Breakers only played one more season before folding. Then, the Sambas themselves would fold the following year, with 2009 being their last. Then, in 2018, nearly a decade since the original Breakers folded, the club re-established their first team side and joined the USL PDL under the banner of Santa Cruz Breakers FC. Now that we've established the historical context of soccer in the Monterey Bay area, let's dive into what we know so far about Monterey Bay FC. A new club or a continuation of an old friend? While the name Monterey Bay FC is new, the club itself is actually considered a continuation of the USL Championship's Fresno FC franchise. The team, owned by Ray Beshoff, ceased operations after the 2019 season because he was unable to secure construction of a soccer-specific stadium. Beshoff retained the franchise rights of the club and the search began for another place in California to relocate to, eventually landing on Monterey Bay. As any good new football club in the United States does, Monterey Bay saved me a lot of time here as they released their own crest explainer. I'm a big fan of the crest and I'm also a big fan of the colors and the names of the colors. Such classics as Chris Blue and Kelp Blue being age old classics. Monterey Bay FC will play their games at what used to be Freeman Stadium on the campus of California State University Monterey Bay. The stadium is currently being renovated with private funds and will hold 6,000 fans. These renovation efforts broke ground on September 16, 2021. The team agreed to a multi-year partnership with Cardinale Automotive Group for the stadium naming rights. At its completion, the stadium will be called Cardinale Stadium. It was also announced that the club's sporting director and head coach will be two-time MLS Head Coach of the Year Frank Yallop, who is previously the general manager of Fresno FC. He's managed the San Jose Earthquakes, the Canadian national team, the LA Galaxy, the San Jose Earthquakes again, the Chicago Fire, and Phoenix Rock. FC, all in that order. He won the MLS Cup twice, once in 2001 and again in 2003, both with the Earthquakes. Before being a manager, he was also a player. Frank Yallop played for Ipswich Town in England from 1983 to 1996, signing his first professional contract at the club at the age of 18. In these 13 years, he made 389 appearances as a defender and scored 8 goals. One of these goals being against Manchester United in February of 1993, where he and the Tractor Boys defeated the eventual champions at home by a score of 2-1. to one. He was named Ipswich's Player of the Year for the 1987-1988 season. Now, their roster. 
Bear with me here as I plan to break down their entire roster and I promise I will do this as quickly as possible. Let me just take a sip of mate so I don't get dehydrated here. <sighs> Alright. First up, the first ever player announced from Monterey Bay FC was El Salvador International and Santa Cruz, California native Walmer Martinez. Monterey Bay acquired Martinez through a transfer with Hartford Athletic of the Eastern Conference. Last year, he made 19 appearances for Hartford Athletic and scored two goals for them. Sporting director and head coach Frank Yallop said, I'm thrilled to announce Walmer as Monterey Bay FC's first player signing. It's very important to have young local athletes playing for our club. Hopefully this is the first of many local players joining Monterey Bay FC. Walmer Martinez was selected for both the 2021 Gold Cup and 2022 World Cup qualifying. He has made 16 appearances for El Salvador, scoring two goals. Next up on the Monterey Bay FC roster is, um, is, uh, this is awkward. Walmer Martinez is the only player announced for Monterey Bay thus far. Monterey Bay FC will begin their first ever season on March 12th, traveling to play Phoenix Rising FC in their home opener. That is pretty much all there is to know about USL Championship newcomers Monterey Bay FC. Did I miss anything? Is there anything else I should know? If so, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. As always, I have been Jarrett Mackey. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you can be one of the very first to know about the next episode of the USL Championship Explained.